How's it going guys? My name is Zach with The Movie Castle and today we're going to be talking about Slumber Party Massacre Part 3 from 1990. This is directed by Sally Madison and stars uh, Kelly Kristen as Jackie Cassidy. Um, we open on a beach. Um, this is a uh, should mention going in, they are borrowing elements from the first two, and the second one, I, actually I looked it up, the first one was set in California, even though it was in the neighborhoods, you never really got to see the famous California coast, uh, part two really emphasized that, so part three we have to begin on a beach, some girls are playing volley volleyball with some boys, and a creepy guy shows up and starts to uh, watch them. Um, as they talk, you learn that the main character, Jackie, is living there, but her family is selling the house, and they are going to move. Now, it's uh, worth noting right now, Jackie is in no way related to anybody from the first two movies, and actually nothing really is. Um, the third movie has only thematic connections, you know, no plot connections. It's only themes from the first two movies that carry over. You're gonna get another slumber party and another killer who will also use a drill, which would just be st a statistical anomaly, you think. But anyway, I mean, drills aren't a super common weapon, and to target a slumber party specifically, if there's no reason, that's just, that's a statistical improbability, not very likely. But anyway, um, Jackie's moving, she's not too happy about it, she likes her friends, so she wants one last hurrah why the parents are, her parents are gone, and she's going to invite her friends over for a slumber party. And to be fair, this is probably the more realistic of the slumber parties. It, it focuses more true to the title, and you see the girls there in their nightgowns, and they're partying and having fun. And of course, the boys show up and try to spook them as per usual. Um, this actually feels almost like a, a remake of the first one. You know, it follows very similar beats. I mean, the characters are different, the motivation's different, but things are happening so very similarly. Um, but anyway, before too long, the killer does eventually start to uh, come, uh, come about. Uh, this killer is a little different in his own ways. He's got a black hoodie this time. He's got one of those clear mask that distorts the face enough, kind of a Think Alice Sweet Alice. Actually, very similar. Alice Sweet Alice had a yellow raincoat. This is a black hoodie, and they have the same uh, transparent mask, although no makeup on this one. But yeah, it, it's a mask, so it's a mystery killer. Um, you don't really know who it's going to be. The prime suspects are like the creepy guy from the beach, or maybe it's the next door neighbor that came in and was being a really weird and trying to, you know, look around the house more than he should, you know. So, you have some prime suspects, but there is a mystery uh, this time around, and they actually do, towards the tail end of this film, talk about the character's motivations. Is this dark motivation that, you know, it kind of looks like, you know, like if you ever, in Black Christmas, listen to what Billy's saying, you know, you kind of start to, you know, see the the grungy, like, pre-Halloween slashers were kind of like true crime deal, you know, and it does kind of remind you of that, where you see this guy in a broken psychological state. Now, does it play out in a great way? Um, it's okay. I find, though, that if you look back at the first one, um, the first one had, um like one line to explain the character the killer's motivation and he I don't think he really talked before that and he had one line and it left you wondering so much about the character's psychological state and I found that way more intriguing than 
all you get to know about this character. But that being said, a kind of grungy backstory. I mean, it was better than nothing. And, you know, it is kind of interesting, you know, especially um, a few things that are brought about. There is actually, in the story, if you listen to it, a reference to a figure named Billy, which makes me wonder, maybe it is uh, tied into Black Christmas. I don't know. But anyway, um, it all, the whole movie there, running around this house, and they keep it pretty much just in this one house, but at the same time, the house is kind of big, and it's kind of weird that it's one location, but there's like where the people are, but then you can run off into the dark, almost labyrinth corners, you know, and you can get kind of lost in there. Um, so yeah, it, it, does, it has a few cool kills, and um, there there's some moments to know about it, but that being said, there are also some, uh, some messy parts with some, you know, dumb decisions. Uh, primarily, there was uh, a death later on that uh, was originally much shorter, uh, but Roger Corman, the producer, demanded it to be extended, and, you know, they put in where the killer, you know, does a little bit more torture before uh, just killing the victim, but then in turn, it kind of makes uh, the other girls look like they're just not helping their friend. So there are some frustrating moments like that where you're like, ah, that didn't quite work out. But overall, it, it works out pretty well. Um, the thing is, the first one is a classic slasher. It knows what it is, and it works to its strength. You know, it's a nice, tight, well-put-together slasher. It does everything it's supposed to, does it right. Part two goes into this weird, you know, Freddy Krueger dream thing, and it's different and crazy. And I think, you know, from a technical standpoint, you may say, oh, part three is better, it's put together in a more logical way, and it's done, you know, more standard, but the crazy, the craziness of part two, I will definitely remember part two much more than I do part three. Um, part three, really standard, you know, and it's kind of just another one of the the B slashers you know it takes it back to the real world trying to kinda get back to the first one you know it's like that's what people like try right? go back to the first one and well little do they know part two would get such a cult following um and then maybe if they did part three like that maybe be remembered more I don't know um but it took it back to the first one but also wasn't really like any of the other two, because again, it doesn't reference it, it just happens to, you know, have elements, you know, it's like a lot of the plot from part one, the beach from part two is in the beginning, and there's a little more rock and roll music, not as much as, you know, as crazy as part two, right? Um, overall, like I said, a standard B-grade slasher, it's not terrible, it's, it's not great, but it is, you know, an attempt to make the series, the Slumber Party Massacre series, more like Part 1, but not quite getting all the things that made Part 1 super cool, you know? And it, it does get a lot of it, though, that uh, made it effective, you know? And I don't want to say this is terrible, but yeah, it's just the first one was a classic slasher, did good stuff. Second one was weird, but super entertaining, and this is just standard, not terrible, but not super great, but still, overall, it's a fine movie. Um, for those of you who've seen the other two, go ahead, finish the series. A little bit of a mystery element and more of a backstory, that's, that's something, and that's interesting enough. Uh, the weakest of the series, but if you're a slasher fan, go ahead and watch it. It's, it's fine, and it's short, so... You know, good way to spend an afternoon if you really like slasher movies, but this isn't going to win over the people that don't. But if you like slasher movies, good watch. Not not great, but good. Anyway, um, thank you. Uh, if you watched this far, thank you for watching. I do primarily horror on this channel. I like to say about 95% horror. So I'll be back soon with more horror. 
uh, to everyone who's liked and subscribed. Thank you for watching. You guys really helped the channel out. Anyway, I'll see you guys again soon. Have a good day.